Hi everybody, it's Mike the Healer Good Guy, and in this video we're going to talk about how to find your conflict. Uh, this is important because the conflict is what's causing the majority of your symptoms. And what a lot of people tend to do is they just, they kind of get overwhelmed and then they just don't do anything, or they just start solving random stressful things in their life, which can be dangerous and, and or just be completely ineffective. So what we want to do is identify the conflict. For some people, this is very simple. I was talking to somebody the other day. He said, oh, I have horrible gut pain. And I said, what's been stressing you out? And he said, oh, I kicked my girlfriend out of my house. And the day that she left, that's when the horrible gut pain you know, started. And I was like, okay, well, there we have it. It was like literally like a five-minute conversation. Then with other people, it's like, even with me, with me, it's like, well, I don't know what, the, I, I still don't know what my conflict is. I got some good guesses because my digestive issues started from a very young age. I mean, from the age of five, I remember crapping my pants and having diarrhea and having like really smelly f farts. I can remember certain conflict themes. I can go back to the last big flare that I had. So I'm going to give you the strategies that I use to find conflicts. This can be a very straightforward process or it can be a very messy, you know, time consuming process. But, you know, let me explain this to you. So sometimes it needs, you need help from somebody else. The majority of you need help from somebody else. You're just going to be much better off. You know, you, you pay $100 for a coaching session, maybe even $200 for a coaching session. And within an hour or two, you know, you got your foundation. That is hard to do if you if you aren't trained to do that. So I would recommend that you find you know a GNM person that you like and work with them. So, but even for a lot of us, even with even somebody with my experience who who does this all day long for a living, I find it very beneficial to work with somebody else to see it from a new perspective, because some of us have been you know sitting in these conflicts for so long we we no longer recognize it. So we got this kind of weird messed up saying in English. I don't know if you guys, you other guys have it, but if you put a frog in boiling in, in normal water and you slowly bring it to a boil, the frog won't notice the temperature change and it will boil to death. So a lot of us are this frog. We've been sitting in this conflict for so long we don't even notice it that it's a conflict anymore. It's just part of our normal surrounding. So you really need someone from an outside perspective going like, hey, uh, that's not right. That's not right. You're in boiling water right now. I know you don't feel it, but you're in boiling water and your skin's falling off. Get out or do something about it. So the first thing that we need to do is write down our symptoms. What are your symptoms? Let's, let's use an example, the, the, the lesser curvature of the stomach. You know, someone with lesser curvature of the stomach, they're going to come up to me and they're going to go, oh, I have heartburn. Okay. And then I ask a question, is it only heartburn? Well, sometimes it's pressure pain too. So what, I, what this tells me is that this person is conflict active one part of the day, and then they get the pressure pain when they go home from work at night. And that's the healing phase. So during work, they're conflict active. And then when they come home, the pressure pain starts. So they're going into the healing phase. So that gives me a good starting place to start hunting for what the conflict might be. Is it a coworker? Is it the boss? You know, like what is going on? What is putting that person into the healing phase when they come home from work? Um, let's say uh, someone has hemorrhoids or anal fissures. You know, what are your symptoms? They'll say something like, oh, sometimes it really, 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 really burns, like my ass is on fire. And then other times they're like, oh, sometimes my butt itches and I can itch it until it bleeds. These are real stories, by the way. So one person was telling me about, um, this person was in college, I think, and they got into like a relationship. They did not want to when you're young, you know, relationships are weird. So she got into this relationship with this guy. She really didn't want to be with him. And whenever she was separated from her boyfriend, like when she would go home for college and was like separated from him and like didn't have to be around him, uh, her hemorrhoids got really, 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 really bad. So the burning pain, so let's say 
uh, one day this boyfriend she doesn't want to be with sends him sends her like a really lovey dovey um, uh, text message or something. Hey, honey, da 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 da, like talk to me, blah 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 blah. Oh my god, I don't want to talk to this guy. I don't want to be with this guy. Conflict active. Burning, 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 burning pain in the rectum. And, and, and then it can cause fissures. And then when she talks to him and the guy's like, well, okay, yeah, I'm going to be busy for a week going on vacation, so I won't talk to you. She goes, oh, great, finally, I don't got to talk to this guy. <laughs> and um, then the hemorrhoids start. The cell proliferation starts, and uh, you know she's in the healing phase. And this goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until... She deals with this situation. So, you know, when she's not aware of this knowledge, she's like, oh my God, I ate an apple and now I have an anal fissure. It's like, no, you ate apples your whole life. That didn't cause your anal fissures. You getting into this relationship caused, like you didn't, your butthole did not start bleeding until you got a relationship with this guy. You know, your stomach did not start burning until you started this job. It wasn't because you ate too many pizzas. It was when you started this job. So how, how, so once we need to identify what's the organ and then what phases is it in? What, what, see, like I couldn't have come to those conclusions if I did not understand the organ and what happens in the different phases. We're, we're just using simple logic here. I know I'm a big dork. I taught myself how to like program video games at a young age. Like I'm kind of a dork, so I have like another level of logic than the average person. But you, you have to know the basics of what's going on in order to make these logical um, assumptions. So then we asked, I, I kind of did all these things, like like when did these symptoms start? Did it start when you started a job? You know, it's usually one of these things. Um, you know, the first question I ask is like, who's your boyfriend? Who's your girlfriend? Who's your spouse? You know, who broke your heart? Uh, you know, what, what was happening at your job? What was happening in your hobby? What was happening in your family? I mean, usually the conflict falls under one of those four categories. You know, which one of these things was really stressing you out when your symptoms started? It's all getting things to line up on this timeline. And it, it's very easy for the, the brain's very lazy. It wants to conserve energy. So, uh, you know, if, if I sat here and just like tried to think it out, it's not going to get anywhere. I like literally with, I've been doing this for quite a while, you know, like a year or two now. I, whenever I do like a consultation with somebody, I have a word doc and I'm like putting out, I'm doing, I'm doing out the timeline or I have a piece of paper and I'm drawing out the timeline to help me see how the symptoms line up with these tragic events in their life, these, these stressful events in their life. So, uh, so if they can't remember when the symptoms started exactly, they're like, well, I don't know. I've had heartburn since I was five. I, I can't remember. Okay, you know, usually it's on and off. When was the last time you had really bad heartburn? Well, I had really bad heartburn, you know, this week. Okay, what, when, what day was it bad? Was it bad on Monday? Okay, yeah, it was bad on Monday. Well, okay, what happened on Monday? Well, I don't know. Well, well think, what did you do at work? You know, it, you, you have to guide the person into, like, what was going on. Okay, what was happening last, a lot of times it's like usually a year or two ago. So, okay, when did your symptoms start? Oh, well, hmm, I don't know, last year. Was it in the summer? No, uh, no. Hey, was there snow on the ground? Uh, oh, no, 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 it was spring. I remember, it was spring. You know, you, you, you have to keep digging and digging and digging. Well, what was going on? What was going on at work? Eh, nothing. What was going on in your romances? Eh, nothing. What was going on in your family? Oh, well, so-and-so died. Okay, all right, let's talk about that. You, you have to dig, 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 and it really helps to have someone else by your side with experience help you dig. Remember, you're the frog in the boiling water. You, you, you've had this stimulus, you know, prick you numb. You're numb to it. And a lot of times... Uh, uh, with one of my students, it was very interesting that, you know, oh, my life is fine. I don't have anything that's stressing me out. Okay, when your symptoms started, started all this horrible stuff. 
And, but it took a long time to like build trust and rapport with that person for, to get them to open up. And eventually, you know, they're like, oh, well, I play a lot of video games. And I, you know, I used to play a lot of video games. And I finally asked, okay, when you are playing video games, what are you trying to avoid? And that struck a chord with the person. They got all uncomfortable and fidgety. And I'm like, hey, I know this is uncomfortable, but this is like, like this is part of the process. We have to confront this uncomfortable thing. This uncomfortable thing is what the body is trying to adapt to. And it turns out it was uh, this person like had a really ho a hobby that they were really passionate about, but their health condition, their bloating and their constipation, you know, stole that from them and they, and they couldn't do it anymore. So they were very distraught about it. And in order to keep the peace inside their head, this person distracted themselves with video games. Some people do it with alcohol. Some people do it with marijuana. Some people do it, you know, whatever. So that's how I find a conflict, guys. You just ask guided questions in a logical way. Another question I like to ask is, what do you think about the most? You know, some people will be like, oh, well, I'm really stressed out about work and my girlfriend. I'll be like, okay, which one stresses you out more? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, well, def well like, hey, if you had to, like, tell me which one's which, I'll be like, okay, okay, girlfriend, work. I'm like, okay, all right, well, let's talk about your girlfriend issues. You know, and, and then see if it lines up on the timeline. In order to get severe symptoms, there has to be severe, there has to be intense emotions behind it. To get diagnosed with a disease, you, there has to be intense emotions behind it. So if you look at my life, most of my intense emotions are in my romantic relationships, especially in high school and in college. My most intense and prolonged you know, emotional turmoil had to do with relationships. Today, you know, I've evolved. I've learned a lot. Now it's kind of like this tie between romantic relationships and my purpose. Heal your gut guy. Growing heal your gut guy. Um, and it, it depends on the day. Right now, I'm more, you know, even, I don't, I don't want to like spread my whole personal life around the internet, but, um, you know, uh, Right now, I'm, I'm at my parents' house right now, and I'm very agitated that I have a hard time getting work done because there's family coming over, there's somebody walking through the door, there's somebody doing all this, and like I, it makes me very angry and emotional that I can't, I can't concentrate and get things done. Like, like okay, like usually it's work and girls. So like right now, like I am up here with work because I can't do anything because I keep getting distracted and I want to scream just talking about it right now. And then the girl stuff is like, like here. So if I were having symptoms right now, if I was having really bad heartburn, uh, uh, territorial anger, oh my God, I can't shoot a video because there's somebody outside talking about chipmunks eating, eating the, uh, the, the birds, the patitsas, the birds, uh, bird feeder. Like, shut up so I can make a video that's going to ha actually help somebody. Like, okay. So if that was the con... Like, you, you have to know the symptoms. You have to know the organs. You have to know the healing phase symptoms and the, the conflict symptoms. And, and you just use logic to put these things together. But for those of you new to German New Medicine, that's hard to do because 100% of your brain power is being spent on just understanding you know, what, what we're even talking about. So it really helps to get a practitioner to hold your hand through the process. So that's all I got for you guys today. I just wanted to like, I hope, I, I know it will help. That, that was awesome information. I know it will help you guys. So uh, if you want to learn more and you need to do this, I know you want to learn more. So you need to do this, especially if you have IBS, colitis or Crohn's or SIBO or Candida. Go down below and click on the 30-day plan. Watch it. 
and half your symptoms will go away, at least. So you're going to learn the basics of GNM, and it's going to help you, you know, not worry about your condition anymore, and put you on the right path again. And so another thing that reminds me that I see a lot of people worry about, other than these four things, is they worry about food. They they have food phobias, and then they worry about the condition itself becomes a stressful thing. You know, it's pretty stressful to spend two thousand dollars on a mold expert. And then, you know, they just tell you some stupid stuff that's going to cost $5,000 and not address the root cause of the problem. That's when, that's when, like, those are the stories I hear on a daily basis. Like, oh, I spent $500 and then I spent another $500 and I can't work because my symptoms are so bad, blah, 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 blah. That's, I mean, that's when the condition becomes a conflict itself. What, what is this person stressed? Because, you know, Maybe if maybe you know someone got broken up with and that started the initial flare, and then then the condition itself, you know, this this went away, the person's in a relationship, they're not thinking about that anymore. And then now all of a sudden, you know, they're getting, you know, and when they get into that new relationship, the clone the Crohn's, the colitis symptoms flare up again because they're they're resolving the conflict and they and they and then they get stuck in this vicious cycle. They're not worrying about the boyfriend and the girlfriend stuff anymore. They're worrying about the condition. It's, it's good to know that this started it. But what are they more conflict active about now? So we need to just, we need to see where all the pieces are in the chessboard first before we start strategizing on what we need to do next. What are the changes I need to make in my life so I'm not being distracted, you know, by people coming down here talking about chipmunks and I can't make a video? I need to move. I need to build a shed out back. You know, I'm in the process of dealing with that. You know, the, the girl that is in the relationship, she doesn't want to be in the relationship with this guy. I don't know. Break up with him. You know, sometimes that's easy. In some instances, like when it's in college and stuff and you're separated, just freaking break up with him. Who cares? He'll, he'll get over it. Uh, but if you're like living with the person and, you know, your lives are intertwined, that's tough. I don't know. Only you can answer these questions. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for you to guy for you guys today. Go down and click on the thirty day plan. It comes with a PDF. And uh, bye bye.